The hot season of the year is nearly over, but today we're gonna show you how to power up your air conditioning system with your PV power. Welcome ladies and gentlemen to our today's webinar here at Fronius in Wales. My name is Michael Raunig and together with my colleague Sandro Köhl, we will guide you through this webinar today. If you have any questions during or after the webinar, please feel free to use our chat function in the GoToWebinar software and we will then answer your questions here in the webinar and in the live chat. So let's have a look at first what's on the agenda today. First of all, uh, we will talk about the fact why you should use your PV power to run an air conditioning system. So we will have a look on the possibilities how to control a cooling or heating from a PV system. And of course, we will show you what Fronius has a solution to offer for you. We have, last but not least, of course, the advantages and different applications that are usable within the Fronius solutions. So first of all, why is there a motivation to use the PV power for cooling and heating devices? So first of all, as you all know, most PV systems or only have uh, so a feed in power from 70 to 80 percent so most of the power produced by pv systems is fed into the public grid this is for residential systems of course and therefore lots of money is lost that can be spared otherwise so in the graphic on the right side you see the price per the, the, the cent price per kilowatt hour so there is a big price difference between the energy tariff that you pay your utility grid uh, to consume electric power from the grid. And of course, it is a much lower tariff uh, that you get for the energy that you feed into the grid. So and with this price difference, uh, we can use uh, to power up our cooling or heating devices. And therefore, it makes perfect sense uh, to power up the air conditioning system, for example, or the heat pump system with the energy that is coming from the PV modules. So uh, when it is economical to use um, the PV power for cooling or heating, of course, if you have a heat pump system or an air conditioning system at home, so if you have these systems already installed, uh, you can very easily take your PV power to power up these devices. Of course, also, if the utility grid has a feed-in limitation, so if you are in a country where there is a feed-in limitation, you can also very easily use your PV power to power up the devices. And of course, if you are in a country where there are high electricity tariffs from the utility grid, it makes perfect sense to use your own generated PV power. So let's have a look now on how to control a cooling or heating source. So first of all, there are three different uh, types of controlling uh, climatic system. So in this case, an air conditioning system. First of all, there is the possibility to control the air conditioning system, of course, with a timer and temperature setting. So for example, when the air conditioning system itself delivers, for example, an app, an application that you can use, you are always free to choose the temperature and, for example, a timer function of the system itself. So there you can choose, for example, that the air conditioning system should be activated um, during a high um, radiation times. So for example, at one o'clock in the afternoon or at midday, where there is lots of ir irradiation. So as you see, the system will then always run uh, when there is the time of the day when it is uh, lots of um, yeah, sun hours and lots of temperatures, of course. So second is then the Fronius energy management. And here it is possible to, for example, control heat pump systems or of course, uh, switch on and off the air conditioning system. So this has then the advantage, of course, that you can use our built-in digital output signals. And with these output signals, it is then possible to control, for example, the air conditioning system. So this system really is about the inverter telling the air conditioning when to shut on and when to shut off the power. So therefore, of course, uh, it is very um, basic to say that uh, with the PV energy, when the PV energy is produced, the air conditioning system also is running. And 
and third um, the, uh, option is then the stepless surplus control and in this case for example with the Fronius own pilot it is then possible to generate uh, with the surplus energy for example a generation of hot water or of course for example for heating purposes so here it is really possible to do a stepless control with the Fronius own pilot and really use your surplus energy that is produced during the day uh, to store it in a hot water tank for example so these are the three basic methods we can use and of course the first one is very basic so it's very easy to use but of course it doesn't necessarily always depends uh, to the generation of power from your PV system. So now we have the approach for highest self-consumption rates so um, of course the first basic thing you need to do is to find out your electricity consumption. So with the Fronius inverter and the Fronius smart meter, it is then possible to set up an energy monitoring system. And with this energy monitoring system, with the help of our digital solution SolarWeb, it is then possible to monitor your PV system. And there you can have a look, of course, on your daily curve. And there you see uh, that your PV system is generating power. And of course, during the day, the household consumes electric energy. And at night time, for example, at uh, six o'clock in the evening, when the uh, inhabitants of the household um, uh, come home, they switch on the air conditioning system. And of course, it is then possible to do a load management. So for example, to shift uh, these high consumers like the uh, heat pump or the air conditioning system into times when there is high irradiation, so when there is high PV power coming from your modules. So when you now have your consumption uh, monitored, you can then decide when to switch on and off your loads. And of course, the third possibility then is a hot water tank, for example, and a battery storage system. With a battery storage system, it is then possible to store the surplus energy during the day and use the energy in the nighttime hours. So for example, if um, the people of a home are not at home during the daytime, uh, the energy that is produced during the daytime is stored in the battery storage system and the energy from the battery can then be used during the nighttime hours and during the evening hours, of course. So in the next page, you see the self-consumption rates. So this is now a typical residential household in Austria. This is an example now. And the first method is just to shift the load. So in this case, we have a PV system with five kilowatt uh, of, of capacity. And therefore we have a heating and cooling system with an air conditioning system. So now we do the method with the timer, for example, and the temperature control, and we switch, so we shift the air conditioning uh, power to times when there is high ir irradiation. And as you see in the last slide, the self-consumption rate is raised up to 10, up to 20%. So it is possible to higher up, so to raise your self-consumption rate by just shifting the loads uh, from times when there is lots of PV power and therefore have a higher self-consumption. Second possibility is then the load management. So in this case, for example, with a heat pump, it is possible to control the heat pump with the digital outputs from the inverter. And therefore it is then possible to raise your self-consumption up to plus 20%. And third possibility is then the possibility with the Fronius own pilot. And again, with the same system, we have now, for example, a hot water tank of 500 liters. So the PV surplus energy is then taken into account to heat up the hot water in the hot water tank. And therefore, of course, because you can use the system all day long, uh, the self-consumption rate is uh, raised up to up to 50%. So in this case, uh, it is very basic and easy to higher up your self-consumption. Of course, therefore, feed less energy into the grid and use more of your self-produced energy at home. And this really is the goal about the self-consumption rates that we have here. So now let's have a look on the Fronius solutions for space cooling. 
So first of all, we have again our uh, consumption display. So in this case, the energy monitoring of the own consumption of the household. So in the picture on the top right side, you see the total consumption of the household. So this is a typical load curve of a household. So you see a morning uh, peak and the evening peak when the inhabitants of the household came home. And of course, you see the red area, there is the air conditioning. So the air conditioning system is then uh, powered up during the times when there is um, high uh, consumption. And of course, uh, we want to avoid this because we want to avoid the peak loads within the system. And therefore, we can just um, display our consumptions. And therefore, we can do the so-called multi-smart metering method. Therefore, we have our primary smart meter at the feed-in point. And we have a secondary smart meter at the point of consumption. So in this case, at the air conditioning system, or of course, you can also use this with a heat pump system. And the secondary smart meter is then used to display the consumption of the device. So in this case, you can display then the consumption of the air conditioning system, for example. So this is a very basic and easy method of displaying your consumption within your household consumers. And now we have in this picture the daily curve of a household. So in the back, the green area is the feed-in power. So this is the power generated by your PV system and then is fed into the grid because it is not used in the household. So the gray area is then the uh, consumption of the system. So this is the loads within the household, for example, TV or cooking. And then the red area again is the air conditioning cooling. So this is the air conditioning system. And this is again powered on when the inhabitants of the household came home. So at six in the afternoon, for example. And therefore, because there is still some ir irradiation and still some power coming from the modules, uh, we have, of course, five kilowatt hours of consumption per day. But this, of course, affects in a low self-consumption rate because most of the energy that is used for the air conditioning comes from the utility grid and the energy for that, of course, must be paid. So how can we change this behavior now? There is the possibility of program the air conditioning system. And, of course, we can program the air conditioning system itself to a lower set temperature. So, for example, when the uh, when the people of a home know they come home at six o'clock in the evening, for example, they can program the temperature of the air conditioning system lower. So the air con air, con air conditioning system will then run um, during the daytime hours and cool down the household. And therefore, it is possible to shift the loads from the nighttime hours to uh, for example, in the afternoon. And therefore, we can, of course, use more PV power that is self-generated instead of buying the electricity from the grid. Another method, of course, is to do load management. And, of course, uh, there we can uh, avoid peak loads within the household. So, for example, uh, when we have our typical uh, load curve again, we see that we have the air conditioning system running already in the afternoon. And then there is a peak load at six o'clock in the afternoon. And therefore the air conditioning system is interrupted by our load management. So it is possible to switch off the air conditioning for some time during this high peak loads to avoid consumption from the grid. So this really helps to uh, avoid peak loads. And of course, if you have to pay for your peak loads, this system can be really effective in cost of economics because you just avoid um, the consumption from the grid. Okay, so now let's have a look how the load management is done. And basically it is to say that it is done our, uh, with our digital uh, IOs within the inverter. So the digital IOs in this case are just a basic a 12 volt signals and you then um, connect a potential free relay. And with this relay, it is then possible to switch on and off the air conditioning system. 
So the Fronius inverter will then send the signal to the relay and the relay just powers on and off the air conditioning system. Of course, depending on the air conditioning system itself, it is possible that the air conditioning has a potential free contact within. So some air conditioning systems are already prepared uh, for an external signal and they can work with the external signal from the inverter. Of course, it is then also possible to build in a manual switch and therefore make an override because, for example, if it is very hot within the house, um, the customer then can decide to manual switch on the air conditioning system to cool down the household. So next up is the heat pump solutions and the heating and the cooling with heat pump solutions. So as you may heard, there are already smart grid ready heat pumps out there in the market. And the smart grid ready heat pumps can be used by the inverter to control the heating or cooling of the heat pump itself. So there are then uh, some operation modes and the operation modes can be, for example, the increased temperature mode. So during daytime hours, for example, if there is lots of uh, PV irradiation and lots of PV production, it is possible to increase the temperature of the heat pump even more, or for example, uh, on the other side, cool down the temperature even more. So therefore it is possible um, to operate the heat pump when there is lots of PV power and cool down the household during the day so that the household is already cool when the inhabitants came back from work, for example. And the other signal is, of course, to stop the heat pump. So uh, during situations when there is less PV power or during nighttime hours, for example, uh, the heat pump, the signal can also stop the heat pump itself and therefore avoid a consumption from the grid. Okay, so now how does such a a smart grid ready heat pump looks like. So in this case, it is very basic, uh, like the air conditioning system. It can be controlled via an external relay. So this is then again a 12 volt relay. And the 12 volt relay is then controlled by the Fonius inverter. The relay itself switches on and off the smart grid ready heat pump. So this is a very basic system and it is very easy to set up because I just need a relay and of course the heat pump itself to power on and off the operation mode. And for example, as I said, the increased temperature mode can then be adjusted, for example, from 40 up to 60 degrees. So if there is lots of PV generation, the heat pump then produces hot water in the range of 60 degrees because there is more power available. And if there is less power available, then only 40 degrees, for example, is produced. So again, on our daily curve, we can see now the adjustment to the energy profiling. And in this case, for example, we have a lot of PV, um, uh, uh, PV production during the day. And here we have the hot water generation uh, in noon. And in the afternoon, there is also made a cooling or heating depending on the season of the year. So for example, uh, instead of generating the hot water and the cooling during the nighttime hours where we don't have PV power, uh, now the PV power is operated and uh, the, air, uh, the smart grid ready heat pump is then operated when there is lots of PV power. So in this case, the hot water generation takes place in noon and after that, the smart grid ready heat pump then cools down the place during the day. Okay, so now let's have a look on the commissioning of the system itself. First of all, with our Fonio Snap Inverter series, uh, we have the Data Manager 2. Uh, and with this Data Manager, we have the orange Data Manager plug that you can see in the picture. And there we have our four digital IOs. So these are the four digital in and outputs. These are just 12 volt signals that are coming out from the inverter and they can be controlled depending on the PV surplus energy. So as you see on the data manager plug itself, there are four connections. So this is digital IO 0, 1, 2 and 3. And you can just connect 
these 12 volt source uh, to a relay, for example, or directly into a smart grid ready heat pump or air conditioning system. All you need to do to use this function is to enter via the Wi-Fi access point into the inverter and go to settings. And within the settings of the inverter, so we are now here in the web interface of the inverter, we now have the digital I.O. mapping and there you can control your load management itself. So all you need to do is to type on the checkbox of load management, so activate the load management and just set in your pins uh, that you wish to use. So for example, if you know you have, for example, an air conditioning system and a pool pump, you need two digital outputs and then you set just the pins right for your consumption. Second thing is, of course, uh, to put in the thresholds of such a system. So as you can see here, we have the load management number one, and we can now uh, choose the controlling of this load management. So please type in then by power surplus. This means that the um, digital output is activated when there is a feed-in limitation. So if you, of course, um, choose to feed in or a consumption threshold. So in this case, we have a threshold, for example, um, to power on this contact with a feed-in of 1,100 watt and to power it off on a consumption of 100 watt. So the thresholds can be set there and, of course, uh, the values must be right to operate air conditioning system. Second is then, for example, to avoid peak loads. So if you wish to power off your air conditioning system in times of high peak loads, you can also uh, just turn off the digital output with a consumption of 3000 watts, so 3 kilowatts, and then the air conditioning system is shut down during high peak loads. So for example, if you come home in the evening and power on um, your oven, for example, then there is a, a peak load and the air conditioning system is turned off during this peak load times. Of course, it is free to choose a duration. So you can set in the minimum duration per on signal. For example, set it to five minutes that the air conditioning system stays off for five minutes at least. And of course, there is the possibility to choose a maximum duration per day. Okay, so now let's have a quick look on the references and the economics of such a system. So we have now here three examples for you. So in this case, we are always uh, calculating for a four person household with a five kilowatt system PV array and air conditioner system. So this is in this case a split system or for example, a heat pump such as a smart grid ready heat pump. Yeah, then the air conditioning is used for two rooms and the energy demand for the heat pump is used for cooling and for heating of the household itself. So in the first case, uh, we do the calculation for Northern Europe. So there we have a relatively high energy tariff that you have to pay for the energy coming from the grid. So in this case, it is around 30 cent per kilowatt hour. And uh, then we need 500 kilowatt hours per year. The energy demand then um, is uh, 3,200 kilowatt hours per year. So this is to heat and cool all the rooms. And now you can see the savings for cooling mode with PV power. And this is around 80%, so around 120 euros that you can save uh, with operation mode with the PV power. And of course, the savings for the heating mode with PV power uh, is even higher. So you have the 30% and then you have 280 euros of savings during this year. The second uh, example is then for the Sunbelt countries. There we have a relatively um, or lower energy tariff. We only have 50 cent per kilowatt hour and there we need 1,500 kilowatt hours per year. This is just because of uh, the space cooling. So there is a high demand for space cooling uh, that we need for the household. Of course, because it is much warmer in these countries, we have only 500 kilowatt hours per year for um, 
a room heating. So in this case, for cooling, of course, you can use lots of energy from your PV system and therefore uh, the self-consumption is raised up to 90% and therefore we can spare 200 euros. And of course for heating, it's a bit less because there is not much heating demand, but nevertheless we can spare 60 euros on that. And the third example is then Southern Europe and there we have a relatively uh, middle um, energy tariff with 25 cents per kilowatt hour and for space cooling there is used 900 kilowatt hours so as you can see this is then the space cooling in the in the midterm and of course uh, there is still a demand for for room heating and therefore we have 1500 kilowatt hours per year the savings of the energy tariff is then 200 euros for the cooling and of course for the heating 190 euros so this always depends, of course, in which country you are and where you use these systems. The total savings can then be from 260 up to 400 euros per year. And this is only by, um, by controlling your load, so by controlling the air conditioning system and, for example, the heating of the rooms. So we have then, of course, different factors that influence these savings. So depending on the thermal situation of the household, of course, uh, there is a bigger or smaller saving, of course, because if you have, for example, a glass facade, um, yeah, you have a re relatively high demand for room heat cooling, for example, because, of course, the house will then heat up and then you need to cool down with an air conditioning system. Of course, also the number of persons in a building is very critical. So for example, for, um, for commercial buildings, uh, the more people are in a building, the less you need to heat, for example. And of course, the efficiency of the heat pump or the air conditioning system is also very, very uh, influencing the system. The PV size and orientation can be influenced on the savings and of course the irradiation and the energy that your PV system produces. So the second example is now for commercial systems. So in this case, we have an example of an of a office building. So this is then done with a big office building uh, where there is a lot of space for cooling and on heating, of course. And in this case, we have a look on the air conditioning system of this office building. And again, you can see uh, in the picture below the daily curve of this system. And of course, we have a PV yield and the energy consumption of the office building. And since there, the, um, uh, the air conditioning is running during the day, because of course, during the day, the people are working in the office building, uh, the demand for energy for the air conditioning system meets perfectly with the uh, production of the PV system itself. So in this case, from the morning uh, down to the evening, we have lots of energy coming from the PV modules and therefore operating the air conditioning system. So for this office building, we have an energy demand for the air conditioning system of around 30,000 kilowatt hours. So this is a relatively high consumption for air conditioning system. And then we have, of course, an energy cost per year of 3,600 euros. A self-consumption rate is then achieved up to 90%. Because as you can see in the picture, nearly everything that is produced by the PV system is then used for the air conditioning system. And therefore, it is possible to have a saving of around 3,200 euros per year. So in case of an office building, it makes perfectly sense to use your PV power and to use a PV system to cool down the office building itself and to operate the air conditioning system. Another project that is built is, of course, a cooling application. So in this case, we have, again, a commercial solution for cooling down goods. And in this case, on this facility, there is built a 99.9 kilowatt peak system and a cold storage space of 650 square feet. And we have now a energy consumption per day that is around 700 kilowatt hours. So this is the energy consumed for the cooling uh, of, the, of the building and of course the cooling of the goods within the building. 
So the warehouse then have a self-consumption rate of about 80% because of course the warehouse cooling is running all day long and therefore the PV surplus energy is then used to operate the air conditioning of the warehouse. And as you can see, we have a saving of around 10,000 euros per year. So this is a relatively high saving by building up a PV system just to operate the warehouse cooling. So if you need further information on our Fronio solutions, you can find them on our homepage. And of course, we have the operation instruction and the installation manuals. So if you wish to install such a system, please have a look on our website, fronios.com. And in the download sector, you can then see the installation manuals. And there, of course, you can also see uh, how to operate such a system and how, for example, to set up the first installation of inverter. And if you wish to get more information on our inverter products and solutions, please visit our trainings homepage. Uh, you can find it on photovoltaics under the events. And there you can register for a training here at Wells or also in your country, of course, um, if you wish to attend training and to have um, yeah, trainings on PV products. And of course, on our YouTube channel, uh, we have how-to videos and installation videos. So we have gained some questions during the webinar, of course. And now my colleague Sandro will read out the questions that you have gave to us. Yes, hello from my side. We have received some very interesting questions. And I will pick out two questions, which we will now answer live to that all of you can see the answers of the question. The first question is, uh, can I use the di digital contacts, that means the digital IOs, uh, to activate the load if I have set zero feet in in the options? So the answer is yes, of course, you can use the digital IOs. Uh, even in case of zero feet in settings, you have then, like Michael told us in the webinar, to the settings within the load management, you have to click on uh, the Pi SERP power surplus and then set your limits for feed in uh, and your uh, switching off for, for example consumption and then you can also realize energy management with zero feed in. Again one the second question was about uh, which might be interesting for you all is can I switch on the digital contact manually even if there is no surplus energy via solar web, I mean. Regarding this question, we have to say that no, you cannot uh, switch on the digital contact manually. Uh, it is a 12 volts DC signal, which is given automatically by our Fronius product. Uh, and the switching on and off is uh, according to your predefined settings in the settings interface of the inverter under the load management. So no manual uh, switching on of the digital IOs you all, all have to do on the inverter interface itself and then the inverter does it automatically. Uh, but there is still the possibility of course to do a manual switch after the digital IO. So after the relay of mm. course you can switch on and off your loads. This is no problem. So this is then a manual switch mm. and the customer has to operate it by a manual switch. It's a manual switch but it needs a, another component uh, of course. But if you want to realize it with the Fronius inverter it's not possible to do it directly from the Fronius inverter. So I think that was uh, all, that was the questions. Uh, I give the closing words again to Michael. Thank so. you, Sandro. And of course, thank you for your attendance today. Uh, we will stay online in the chat. So if you have further more questions, please feel free to contact us on the chat. And of course, I will be happy to see you at the training or one of our next webinars. So thank you for attending today. See you next time and goodbye.